Hey guys, welcome back. Getting again, doing some, having some progress on the 66 Olds 442 convertible that I started <clears throat> quite a while back and have had some delays, vacations, other videos, things like that. But here we go again. I have uh, started on the bare metal foil and it's looking great. I did just now the uh, did some on this side I'm going to set the camera up I'm not going to do all this bare metal foil is very time-consuming but I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to do this uh, this back section here just to give you an idea how I do it if you haven't seen uh, bare metal foil uh, being put on before so I'm going to do that <clears throat> and uh, see how that goes and just get some work done to this thing so stand by okay so I have here my bare metal foil um, this particular sheet is thicker the foil is thicker I don't like it I don't know if bare metal foil is very inconsistent but this sheet here the stuff is thick and it makes it a little more difficult however you can do it Here's my X-Acto knife, brand new blade with a little black uh, marker on it so that you can see when you're cutting against this with a shiny blade, it's hard to tell where your blade is. So some guys told me at one time, paint your the, the tip of your, uh, your blade black and you can see it. So that's what I do. <clears throat> I have a little ruler here. Not that I, it's in millimeters and... I don't use millimeters or, or centimeters, but you can. We here in America have the, what is it, the standard? I don't even know what our measuring system's called. All right, so, but I do use this ruler. Also, you need to have some Q-tips. I like to get these pointed guys. You can get them in the makeup section. Well, you can get them. I think they're for makeup. See, the, the end is, one end is kind of flat. This end is pointy. So they're very, very good to press the bare metal foil in with. And so what I have to do right now is find a piece of foil. So I'm going from this point to this point, and I'm also doing the wheel well. So it has to be as thick as from here to the top of the wheel well, which is about, uh, you give yourself some extra. I'm just going to go one and a half just centimeters. Yeah, like one and a half centimeters. And then how long? About nine centimeters. So one and a half by nine centimeters. It's not big enough, is it? Nope. Okay, so I'll just cut me out a new piece here. Take your very sharp X-Acto knife. And I'll make a little mark at nine nine is right here and then one and a half millimeters or centimeters rather it's about right here so just kind of guesstimate and cut over to there then to there now i use the edge of my knife to peel Peel the foil off. This stuff is just so thick. It's almost like using uh, HVAC tape, which I don't like to use, but not as well. This stuff is so darn thick. If you get the real bright chrome, it's so thin that it curls up like a pig's tail when you pull it off and you can't do anything with it. You waste a whole sheet. All right, so here we go. There's not enough complaining. So I need to lay this on my my chrome is knowing that i'm going to cover cover the bottom but yet enough that it's going to cover that wheel well and it's going to go all the way to the end that looks like it's going to do it there so just press it with your with your finger at first this is how i do it by the way i've never even read the instructions on the back of on the package of bare metal foil i just i'm a guy i just figured it out it works for me take my q-tip Start to press it in really good. 
press it in, press it in, press it in. And be careful around your edges because if you slip, you'll just tear right through. So you want to be, and I might even demonstrate how that happens if I'm not careful. So just go around the corners, keep working it in. Around it. This is the easy part. This is the easiest part of bare metal foil. Is just sticking it on there. The hard part, cutting it out. My, um, cutting it, you know, around the edges. That's the most difficult part for me. It can get a little tedious when you're trying to fit some some foil. I'm going to do like around the windows and things like that. All this window trim, even the windshield wipers. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt too. But this is a uh, cutting it out is by far to me the most difficult. All right. So first, I start here in these joints. I'll just cut straight across, straight across, not all the way through. I want it to kind of stay connected. So when I pull it off, it all comes up one piece if possible. Then I'll go right here and your blade should ride right on the edge, but sometimes it will jump course and go crazy. So I just cut it to there. Go back here on the back. I hope you guys can see this. I don't know if it's focusing very well. Here. Just let the blade ride down in the crease. Stop there. See how thick that is? It's almost like tin foil. And I'll get a hundred <clears throat> comments that says you can just use Elmer's glue and tin foil. But guys, I don't understand. Okay, help me out. So if I use Elmer's glue and tin foil, what I've got to do, I, I'm, I'm assuming now, I've got to take Elmer's glue and I've got to put Elmer's glue everywhere that I want to put bare metal foil or the foil. And so I have glue and then I have to take the tin foil and go over that glue and then cut out the tin foil and wherever there's extra glue, then I've got to clean that glue up. I, I can understand that if they didn't have this stuff. I totally get it. You know, we do what we have to do. But they, you know, that seems like a heck of a lot extra, a, a lot of extra work and a lot of extra cleanup. I mean, I've never done it. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm totally looking at that from a wrong angle. But it looks like to me the, the tin foil and the Elmer's glue is a lot more work because you, you have to clean up then that extra glue. With this bare metal foil, I do have a little cleanup of the, the residue from the from the glue, but it just cleans right up with a Q-tip. And maybe maybe Elmer's glue cleans, cleans up with a Q-tip. I don't know, never tried it. I personally despise putting this stuff on. This is no fun. It makes the model, it makes the model though. So it's worth the effort, but boy, is it no fun. And again, these are all my opinions, and you're free to have your opinion. You just have to start your own YouTube channel. But I guess you can you can actually express your opinion on my YouTube channel in the, in the comments, which most of you guys do. And I appreciate the comments for the most part. This is a pain right here, trying to cut around this darn, oops, trying to cut around this wheel well without going too far up. You can always go back and trim a little bit more, but you can never untrim it. It's kind of like wood. That's why I'm not a good carpenter. I always jump the gun and okay. So let me quit talking about carpentry. They say you can't what measure twice, cut once. Okay, so I've got it cut out. Oh dang, I forgot something. Okay, so we have to cut the underside. So in order to roll that edge around we don't need to cut right on the edge we need to give ourselves a little bit so right here i'm going to just start in the middle i'm going to start right about there and i'm just going to keep with the contour of the curve go around just go around 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 and, and then you meet at that cut and now i can take this stuff let me split that be very careful that you 
when you're pulling this and you can keep uh oh I didn't cut through all the way problem make sure you cut all the way through before you pull it off like I just did See, there was all, all one piece. So there, there it is. It's kind of like you feel good when you peel an orange and you are able to peel the whole thing without, without uh, breaking the peel. That's kind of how that feels. All right, so now take your, <clears throat> your Q-tip very, very gently because it, will, it pulls the edges up when you pull it up. And if you're not careful, you'll just pull the stuff right off. So get the edges rolled in here and press them in take the tip of your pointy q-tip and go down the center of the, the chrome track there be very careful on these edges be very careful because you can again disrupt the disrupt is that even a proper word to use for bare metal foil disrupt you can disturb you can mess up the uh the foil so that's how you do it it's really not that hard it's just very time consuming and on a car like this that's loaded with chrome it's going to take you a while take your time don't rush it um, if you rush it you can tell that you rushed it I mean this isn't perfect but the farther I get it away from the camera the better it looks um, and then you can go back and touch up the chrome you can go back and say that's too that's too too wide you can always go back and you can take more off just be careful take your time and um yeah it'll turn out great um so that's how i do bare metal foil i'm going to do the windows i'm going to do the windshield wipers i may paint the windshield wipers with chrome paint i'm not sure usually like the door handles because this this bare metal foil is so thick i'll probably use the um, let me make some of you guys jealous where's it at I had some of that darn you guys know the uh, silver or the chrome paint model masters where is it me and my wife we did some rearranging the other day and uh, we've moved it or I've moved it anyway the model masters metallic paints oh here it is this chrome Let's see, is that what it is? Maybe this is aluminum. Chrome. Yeah, this is chrome. So recently, when because Hobby Lobby was getting rid of so much of this stuff, I got like four bottles of this chrome. And it's the best. I just love it. It's a, it's a great paint, but I, I'll paint my door handle sometimes with this chrome paint. And I'll paint my windshield wipers or something like that. that that's just going to be a real pain to try and do with bare metal foil. I'll do it with... Uh, with that chrome paint and really you can't really tell that you, you can if you're paying attention but if you uh if you're not you really can't tell it but anyway all right so i'm going to move forward get some more bare metal foil i may come back and show you some more about windshields or something like that i don't know maybe maybe not so stand by all right here so i have for the most part got the foil completed I'm holding it up on its side. If you can see the black that I've got inside that piece of chrome, I'm trying to let it dry. But I foiled the windshield, the convertible top, both sides, and it's turning out really, really nice. So, let me see if I can turn it over real fast without that pouring out. Yeah, so I've got the door handles, windshield wipers. It's coming, it's coming along nice. Coming along slow, but coming along nice. So just wanted to give that quick update here in this stage of the body. But yeah, it's coming along good. Um, next portion will be finishing the engine. So first video, I, I think it was the first, I, I've lost track. It's been so long now. But I've got to get my, um, I've already got the spark plug holes drilled out in the cylinder heads. And I've got to get the, the distributor mounted. 
and the wires ran get it mounted into the chassis that's been forgotten about over here get it mounted into that get that mounted onto that and get the seats mounted into that and you know how that goes but i've got pretty much got all the interior uh, and engine parts detailed out anyway wouldn't want to focus but yes yeah, so i've just got to do some assembling but it's it's coming along coming along slow coming along s slowly but surely i'll let this side dry that that's actually panel line accent that's actually holding the body up there and i'll let it dry first i put it on really thick um, get some engine work done but really to be honest with you just putting the thing together getting the windows mounted into the body which aren't very many because it doesn't have many windows i will also if you'll notice get something to point with here on the inside of the quarter windows and all i will go in there and i will paint that black i'll pick all that out because i didn't wrap the bare metal foil all the way around so what i'll do i'll go in there and pick that up with the uh with the black if i don't do it with the chrome paint i don't know i'm not 100 percent sure i feel like some pictures of what the inside of the car looked like um it's helpful to have references as a matter of fact i've got the box right here and it actually does look like the inside at least they chrome the inside so i may do that it's uh you have the real car and you have the the real car and the, the model car so it's hard to tell on the real car if the inside was if the inside was chromed or not it doesn't look like on the real car it was but anyway whatever i decide i'll do all right so stand by next segment we should be getting some assembly done stand by all right so got the interior all installed looks great very proud of that um got to do a few little things i've got to bare metal foil the back of the car right above the trunk here i think that's got to be uh chrome um and the front of the hood the right across where it says osmobile that's got to be chrome real small strip and then i'm going to well before that i'm going to install these plug wires i'm going to try and mount my camera above but i'm not sure if it's going to do right i wanted to film i've got the distributor mounted i was going to again show how i uh run the wires but let me see if i can get it mounted. if i can't can't do it um with the mount that i've got here i'll have to regroup but let me see what i can do so just stand by a second okay so maybe that'll work I'm only going to do one side just to show you. I've done this uh, several times, but I'll just uh, I'll do this one side really quick just to show you again how I did it. I showed you how I did my uh, distributor. Not the way everybody does it, just a much simple way I found to do it. You know, a lot of times you can't even see your distributor. It's hidden behind a big old breather or something like that. So I'm not real big on having to have it you know look like it's been timed or it's got the fire in order so i don't do that all right but i do like plug wires so first off get your first plug wire don't cut it too darn short cut it a little long actually that way when you because you've got to curve it get it to go down in there it's hard for me to see the darn motor with the camera in the way test fit this you don't want to go ahead and just put glue on it at first because you'll you'll do exactly what I'm doing here you'll have a heck of a time trying to get it to go in there okay all right so it does fit cool all right so I can go ahead and put a little glue a little of the BSI super glue I don't have any of the gold I use the uh, whatever the pink bottle just a just a touch of super glue not much and these are 
I mentioned before my my uh, tweezers, very high quality. Um, uh, made in Pakistan. Pakistan known for its high quality tweezers. <laughs> I'm just joking. Get you a good pair of tweezers. I've got some of these. No, that's not them. I bought some of these one time at a uh, like the dollar store for like, I thought, oh, there's some tweezers. These are the biggest pieces of junk. They're like so flimsy. I don't even know why I put them back, back up on my magnet, but I do. All right, sorry. Back to the purpose of this. Just want to cut your plug wire not too darn short, but not too long. You need to do it just right. Kind of like the bears. Was it the three bears? Oops, sorry. That sound you heard there was someone asking to join the, the Facebook group, which brings up a great point or a great time to mention. If you have not already joined the Facebook group, do just like that fella did. Go answer the two questions and agree not to be a, a jerk and uh, would love to have you. Then you can share all your videos and pictures and don't mind at all. You guys sharing your videos. That's kind of the purpose of this whole deal. Um, I don't care if you channels bigger than mine that's fine that's not the, you know the the Facebook group is just to uh, just to, to come together as a kind of a community and just kind of like have a good time show your pictures show your builds and stuff like that and so if you haven't already go on over and join and if you haven't already, while I'm doing this, and just have a time to talk here, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would help me tremendously if you would subscribe. I know a lot of people just watch channels. And even if you, so you can watch the channel. And I know that sometimes YouTube, the algorithm, however that works, will, will, will continue to even recommend or show you when new videos to that channel have come out. Um, and you not be a subscriber. Well, if you aren't a subscriber and you're watching my videos, would you please hit that button or hit that button? Um, click that subscription button. And yeah, that would, that would be, that would be so great. And, uh, then you would go over and click the little bell. And it would notify you when I have a new video. And, uh, yeah. About to get this last wire on this side. Get in there. As I do this, I try to be aware of how much slack my wires have. Alright, you've got to absolutely love it when you're right in the middle of something and you run out of memory. It happens to me all the time. Okay. Not just phone memory. Memory. Uh, upstairs memory too. Alright, so once you get your plug wires installed, get them bunched together as best as you can, however you want them to look. What I'll do is I'll take and I'll tie another little piece of wire around to make it look like it's got tie straps or something like that. And I will also take the wires and try to make them sag a bit because I want my wires to look like they have weight. I don't want them just like, you, you don't really see plug wires just like humped over. They're usually kind of flexible and they'll have, they'll be weighted, you know, they'll, they're, they're laying down. So yeah, just as, you know, as, as best you can try to give that element of realism but I like to tie mine together and I'm not going to do that on camera. I've got to clear some more memory out on this thing, but 
I will get them tied. I will get them sagged down and um, try my very best to make them look like they're real. All right, so there you go. Um, gonna do a few more little bare metal foil things. Gonna get a carburetor on this engine, get some more black wash on it. Um, a few other things. Um, it may have a segment or two. I've gotta put the windows in, so I'll probably put the window, front windshield in the car on camera, but not too many more things. We're gonna have a complete model. So stand by once again. Okay, so real quick, I made my little ties for my wires, two little tire ties. I use a real thin piece of solder. You see that piece of solder there, how thin this stuff is? It's tiny. I use that. It's really soft and it breaks easy. And then you see how I made my plug wires kind of lay down like they have, you know, have weight. So that's how I do it. And I'm going to get that thing put together. Got all the pulleys and air conditioning and all that that goes on it. Carburetor. Breather. Where the heck is the breather at? Huh. Oh, it's chrome. That's right. It's a chrome breather. But yeah, look at that interior. Isn't that nice? So it's looking great. Got everything in there. Um, yeah, almost there. Almost there. This thing's taking a lot longer than I wanted. We went on vacation, other things. But here it is, coming together. Got to get the rear end mounted into the chassis along with the engine and the exhaust that's all painted up, ready to go. So everything's really painted, ready to go. Just put it together. Come on, Matthew. Get it together. Now, is it, isn't that a good looking car? Wouldn't you like to drive that? Man. Well, I know that I said I was going to take a maybe another segment or so to do some more details, but it's completed. Here it is, 1966 Olds 442 convertible. Tony Lancer sent me this kit, and it's been a great uh, kit to build. I was able to build it with my, it, I didn't get the instructions with this one, so I was able to use my 66W30 uh, instructions. To be honest with you, you could build this thing without instructions. It goes together so well. Um, yeah, just turned out really nice. The paint um, turned out nice. It, it's just, it's, it's all in all, it's a great kit. I will say one thing, and I got criticized for this on the 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 uh, W30 that I built. You see how the wheelbase is nice and it looks pretty, at least pretty squared up there. On this side, the rear axle, for some reason, it shifts, and my blue one was the exact same way. And I know I'll get have somebody. Your wheelbase isn't isn't lined up. Uh, the stance isn't right. You know, you get all those kind of people that like to comment and like, okay whatever thanks for pointing that out but yeah i know that the darn for some reason and i worked and worked other than ungluing the axle and getting it to uh trimming some parts of stuff i'm like i can just film it on check that out fixed i can just film it on that side passenger side looks great but yeah this this car is um this is a really nice kit it builds just like the the, the, the uh, W30 by AMT. Um, I, I really don't have any issues. You, you always have a few little issues. One, I tell you what, one issue I did have is once you get the uh, once you get the body. I mean the the engine is in the chassis, right? And then you go to put the body down over it. The width of the alternator and air conditioning compressor is wider than the fender wells and you're supposed to slide it down over top of that well guess what you can't because you just the, the way you have to put the body on it just doesn't happen so you have to do some adjusting there some bending some stuff out of the way hoping praying it doesn't break but like i say this car turned out great the interior looks nice it's basic i didn't go you know i didn't go do everything to it i didn't put the uh uh embossing powder for carpet and all that stuff but i just picked out details and it's going to look great on the shelf i did 
I did, you know, pay attention to the the underside. My boot will fall off. The underside. I did a, a just a little bit of dry brushing, just to give it some uh, driven look. But yeah, it's it's a really nice kit. The boot here comes off, obviously, so you can uh, put the put the top on if you want. I don't want to put the top on. That's just how it's going to be. It's going to be just like that. But as you can see, quite a bit of bare metal foil around the windows, um, you know, on the hood, around the headlights, around the taillights, around o over the, the trunk. But yeah, great kit. Thank you, Tony Lancer. Also, my friend Steve Curry, all, he also sent me this kit. As a matter of fact, it lives right up there. Do you see it right there? That's the one that Steve sent me. He also sent me the Lindbergh kit right above it. There we go. And uh, and he also sent me the Johan 70 uh, Oldsmobile right there. What a cool kit. Anyway, get around to those one day, hopefully. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, Frizzo Model Cars. Old Frank over at Frizzo's sent me his shop, two shop carts and a sticker. Check that out. He even gave me a sticker. So um, thanks, uh, Frank. Frizzos. Uh, go over and check his uh, YouTube channel out. If I remember, I'll link it in the description. And also, Dustin over at Hinterlands Customs sent me a shop card. Thank you very much for that one as well. I'll do my best to link those in the description. Um, the shop cards are coming in, and that's really, really uh, generous to you guys and, and thoughtful to do that. I still haven't even got one made yet, but anyway, working on it. Not really. Hadn't worked on it at all, to be honest with you. That was an absolute lie. Um, no, I, I need to do that. I need to do it. Haven't been really busy. Uh, went on vacation. Let me let me let, lay out a list of excuses why I haven't done it. I just haven't done it. That's why. But anyway. All right, guys. It's done. It's going to go on the shelf. I will have some pictures. I'm beginning to get quite the, uh, I don't have my lights on it here. The, the Oldsmobile, where did they go? There they are. The Oldsmobile, uh, I'll have number four up there beside those. It's going to look really nice. Um, don't forget to go to our Facebook group. I will be posting this video on there and maybe some of the pictures of it on the Facebook group. Um, Model Car Videos Facebook group. It's going to be link, uh, the link to it's in the description below, uh, below this video. Also, don't forget to go over and check out our friend Mark at uh, Hobby Nut Models. Go check out Mark's inventory and see what he's got today. It may be different today than it was yesterday, so go check out his inventory. He, he gets uh, quite a few of the older kits, a lot like this one, the ones that have a little bit of age to them, but not, not antiques but by no means, but older kits, the ones that uh, may not be in production right now. So go over and check out Hobby Nut Models, link in the description below. And what else? I guess that's about it. But I will have a slideshow at uh, the end of this video, as always, to get a little more up close and personal with the uh, 66 Olds 442. Man, wouldn't you like to go cruising that thing? Wouldn't that be cool? Um, one real quick thing. the uh, I, I chose to do the stock wheels. It was like, how do you like that? I've already like closed the video out. And, oh, yeah, by the way. But anyway, I did the stock wheels. I like to do one as if it's, you know, as stock. And I just black washed those spokes. Look how nice they turned out. It almost looks like that there is a black backing behind there. But that's just black wash. The black wash the grill. Uh, the, the black in this little chrome piece here, that's just the black wash that, that I put it in really heavy and dry it around the back there. That back strip. Sorry, my, it's not going to focus real good. I just want to pick up this box. I think it's what it is. But anyway, that is a, uh, that's black wash. Anyway, it's very handy. And it, you, what I'm talking about is that panel line accent. That's what I call black wash. Oh, I didn't even pull the hood off, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, let's start over. Okay, guys, this one's done. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going. Um, my, my head's in a different place, apparently. But there's the engine. I'm sorry. I almost completely forgot. So there's the 400 and uh, all done up. Yeah, it's not exactly the right color. Um, my friend Steve that sent me the other uh, 442 kit he actually builds real ones of these and he sent me the actual factory color of the engine which um, was really cool I haven't got any of that paint yet um, but yeah but anyway if you can notice the alternator and the 
uh, air conditioning compressors quite wide well guess what you don't you might want to just like if you build this kit maybe no you can't do that you've got to just try to squeeze it in there there's no other way to get around it oh well enough complaining it's gonna look good on the shelf and I'm proud of it and that's all that matters so thank you guys for watching thanks for subscribing that's what I forgot if you haven't already subscribed go over and please click the subscription link button whatever that thing is um, if you look at the statistics on my videos the majority of my views come from non subscribed viewers so please go over and hit the subscription button it's not going to cost you anything um, but yeah do that thanks a lot guys slideshow on the way take care and we'll see you on the next one bye